Hey everybody, welcome to TFB TV. My name is Corey Wardrop. We're at the Institute of Military Technology. Once again, I've got a really cool gun to show you. This one again, like the last video, is a little bit antique -y. It's actually kind of a lot of bit antique -y. Uh They won't all be antique when we go through this process, but this is what I like, so uh, I guess that's what you get to see. Uh, real quick before we get started, I want to thank everybody that was really positive and encouraging in the last video I did, which was my first video, this being my second video, so thank you for that. And also want to thank TFB TV's sponsors at Ventura Munitions. You guys are awesome, and we love you. Um, also, want to mention, um, the people that told me to calm down, not gonna happen. Sorry about that, and, uh, and off we go. What I've got in my hands here is a flintlock, Durs Egg, breech loading carbine. Now, <laughs> you, you can see by the fact that I'm trying to frame this in the camera here that it ain't exactly a carbine. Let me give you a comparison. Here is a carbine, right? This is a Jenks um, breech loading uh, Muscatoon, actually, this is in about 1839. It is also breech loading, it is also flintlock. We are not talking about this gun. Uh, I should have mentioned, I don't know if I did, it's also smoothbore. Okay. This gun is a Durs Egg. Durs Egg was um, basically based on the Crespi system. A Italian from Milan named Crespi invented this breech loading mechanism in about the 1760s, and then it was pretty quickly adopted by the Austrian army. This gun was by Durs Egg, probably somewhere around the 17, mid 1780s to right about 1800. Durs Egg is popular for, I guess he's best known for, dueling pistols, really high quality pistols. And in Europe in those days, if you were really good at making guns, you didn't make a lot of guns. That would come from the American system of manufacturing later. But Durs Egg made really fantastic quality stuff. He also made the Ferguson rifles, right? We remember the Ferguson rifles. They're the ones that have that big screw plug on the bottom and they sort of spin around like this. It's a breech loading rifle. There was somewhere between 100 and 200 made in the American Revolution, uh, made for use in the American Revolutionary War and for sporting purposes, probably closer to 100. I'm getting off track, ignore me. This one is actually a military gun for what was called the Light Dragoons. And that was sort of synonymous with the cavalry at that time. Not really, but sort of, but kind of. Basically, cavalry in Europe, at least in London and Great Britain at this time, was sort of a nobility rank. And they were demoting all the cavalry guys into Light Dragoons. And what Dragoons used to be was mounted infantry, where they would ride in on horses, jump off the horses, and attack stuff. But at this time period, because of they were trying to get away from the whole nobility thing, we're finding that dragoons and cavalry a little more synonymous. So what's cool about this gun? I've talked about history enough. Let's look at the technology. This is what we're excited about. First of all, it's a breech loader. Let's jump right into that. How does this thing work? You've got a separation here where this handle comes up, right? This handle's gonna come up, and then it's gonna unlock like so, and it's gonna come up. There's some resistance here on the spring, and bing, it jumps up like that. This is really cool for a couple of reasons. Number one, again, being a cavalry gun, you get to sit on your horse, and you get to then load the gun from here. Imagine, right? And this gun, I don't remember the exact length of it, it's about six or seven inches shorter than a brown bess, I wanna say. I don't have my notes and I don't have a ruler, but it's in about the 37 inch range. Um, what we're going to find is that the brown besses were longer. Now again, remember, you're a cavalry guy. You're a light dragoon, you're on your horse. You're going to try to put this hanging off the side of you, running your ramrod and all that, you know, at first of all, Where's your bayonet gonna go if you've got a ramrod? Well, that's kinda, we got, a, we got socket bayonets, we got saber bayonets, we can hook them on our belt loop, but this was a different direction. And this bayonet, <laughs> yeah, here, let me, let me kinda show you in a pan. Uh, <laughs> we'll take a look at this in just a second. Pretty wild. So, again, the breech loading mechanism uh, comes up here, kind of unlocked, and you can see that, you can see this hook right here where it's snapping and unlocking, and that's cool. You're going to bring this up forward. Now, when you bring this forward, this is really important. 
you see the lock here and the lock here. This is a two position lockup. And that's really cool for a couple of different reasons. It's a two position lockup. Um, seal the breach, it's better. So it's gonna open like that. You're going to open it, right? Now, I love this, I love this. I don't know if this is a real term. I think I've made up this term. It's called an administrative close. You'll find this on a lot of breech loading guns. When you open this, and again, we talked about this kind of leaf spring here, right? This spring steel. And you're gonna open this up and it's gonna have some resistance. That's important for a lot of these things. And then once you get past the axis, bing, and we can see here, we can see here on this little uh, travel piece here where the wear patterns are. You can tell a lot about guns by wear patterns. And you're gonna see the wear patterns through here and, um, and it's gonna hold, again, administratively in the upward position and that's really cool. I want you to see something here too, this browning, uh, sort of a Damascene style. That is just really cool. We'll get some close-ups and some pictures of that. Very exciting stuff. Now, this is not a Damascus barrel. What they were doing, which was actually kind of popular and common in this time, is that they would make stuff look like the older Damascus styling. So that's a little bit what we're seeing here. Sometimes it was an acid etch, sometimes it was a couple other things, but we're not gonna get that too far into the weeds. What we did talk about, sort of, kind of, this bar here, this is a saddle ring carbine bar. And again, carbine, who, did, who names these things? Um, Anyway, it is, it is a carbine, and the saddle ring here is missing its ring, but this is what would have been attached to a kind of a single position cross uh, sling that's gonna come across you, and what you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna run you know, on the horse, dun, 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 and you're gonna fire, bang, and you're gonna drop it. And this hook and sling is gonna drop, and it's gonna hang, and it's gonna fall on you. So that's cool. Um, what else? This was a military gun. Did we talk about that? <laughs> it's, it's a military gun. They actually trialed these things. Uh, I want to say that an order was put in in about 1784. I'm going to get my dates a little bit off here, but bear with me. 1784, 1786, they were trialed all through this period. 1788, there was the results of the test. And let me, before I tell you the results of the test, let me show you how this bayonet works. First of all, they were socket bayonets, right? This one is a combination of a socket bayonet and screw thread. Not all of them had the screw thread. So here, let's take a look. This bayonet is gonna come out of this recess here, right? When it does, we're gonna come off of here and it's going to come over here. Now this is, this is pretty typical of a socket bayonet gonna come across and lock, and when it does, we're gonna tighten down that screw thread. Now, I don't have a way to show you <laughs> with any decent way to do it. The length of this darn thing, look at this. <laughs> look at the size of this. I'll, I'll, I'll do a cut in and tell you the, the, the distance on the inches. I almost hit the lights above me with this insane thing. It's probably about 80 inches or so. Um, so the results of the test, what did they find after all this? Well, they basically said that it had potential. Um, they wanted to redo it. The breech loading systems of that time, of which there were several, the Crespi system and several others. Um, and again, up until 1800, right? Maybe 1815. Uh, they said that it was really good. The bayonet specifically, the guys that tested it had complaints about. They said that it needed to be redesigned and maybe we ought to go for a folding bayonet, which <laughs> in 1788, you're going, oh, you wanna to go to a folding bayonet, do you? Uh, <laughs> okay, sure, yeah, we can do that. Now, uh, as a final note um, for our kind of American audience, what you may have noticed is the system is sort of very similar to the John Hall breech loading flintlock rifle. This is a really cool gun for a lot of reasons, and I wanna tell you about all those reasons. We're gonna save it for another video. Thank you for watching, guys. We sure appreciate it, and be sure to check out our sponsor links and like, share, and subscribe, and all that other nonsense. Thanks again to the Institute of Military Technology for allowing me to do these. We're having a lot of fun, and uh, we'll see you next time.